Alright, here is the update for Tuesday, September 25th. It is, I don't know what time it is right now, 8.30 or so. Uh, water is only a little bit murky. I've been cleaning the tank, getting the last of the sediment off there, but the water is just, you can see near the edges, it's really clear. Everything is doing really well. Lots of oxygen. Um, nitrate levels are over 20 or yeah nitrate and the nitrite we are be it's the lowest range of 0 0.25 parts per million before we're getting to a zero on the nitrate same thing with the ammonia we have dropped down to almost zero just the slightest hint of green so we're still going to call it a 0 0.25 on the ammonia see the plants everything's doing real well and it's really interesting too because um, with the pH being as high as it is you have a lot of nutrients that go into a lockout the plant because of the pH cannot uh, utilize the nutrients in the system uh, with cucumbers and the tomatoes anything that's going to produce a fruit or a vegetable um, they won't flower like that. They'll grow just like you see, but we won't see any flowering and we won't see any any fruiting uh, until they can absorb uh, all of the nutrients that they need. And if the pH is too high, they're locked out and they can't do that. So I looked up a few things about water hardness and then I did look up uh, water hardness in Mesa. Look how big those fluffy they're fluffy um, in Mesa I can't remember what the the uh, it, instead of parts per million it's uh, rated in another measurement but we run 12 to 22 which is quite a broad range but I didn't have anything to put it into perspective and I'll try and link the uh, chart that I found to put it into perspective um, on the chart it says anything above 10 is very high hardness. Well, Mesa's 12 to 22, so as you might have, you know, heard in other videos, uh, the harder the water, the less likely the pH is to move. Um, softer water, we you make yourself prone to pH up and down spikes, either one way or the other. So it's not a bad thing necessarily to have hard water uh, unless it's affecting your pH in a, in a high range and not allowing it to drop. If we were just doing plants in here, a, a range of 6.0 on the pH, the plants would love it, but the fish won't. The fish, their blood and their ability to process oxygen um, through their blood uh, needs to be closer to 7.2 um, tilapia process oxygen best at 7.4, but we need a, a, to come to um, more of a, a, a balance between the two, uh, between 6 and 7. So 7 would be about ideal. 6.8 to 7.2 is the range that I'm going to be shooting for in this bed or in this system to allow the plants uh, to do well and the fish to be able to uh, process oxygen through their blood also. The tilapia's blood uh, pH is 7.4 and little bits of blood apparently interact with the water through the respiration and um, tilapia can actually handle quite a range of pH but the plants don't like the pH being high. They are an African cichlid, the tilapia, and so they can handle water up to 9 on the pH scale, but the plants would be in complete nutrient lockout and they would just suffer and die. So, that being said, I went ahead and I called up a buddy of mine that that does work on the hydroponic side of, of things and asked him if he had any phosphoric acid to knock the pH down and he rushed right over here because he just loves this stuff as much as me and put some phosphoric acid in and we instantly had a pH drop. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it, but we are at 7.6 right now. It might jump back up and I'll add a little bit 
to help stabilize it, but it's also going to help me to uh, prepare my top off water uh, as I'm losing water through evaporation. You don't want to just add more tap water back into this and even the reverse osmosis water in Mesa and Tempe still tends to run really hard so you're still having to adjust pH one way or the other. So now that we've knocked it down if the water hardness stays where it is once I get it stabilized to the area I, I have it at I shouldn't see too many knock on wood too many uh, differences in the noisy car driving by too many differences in the pH once we get it stabilized, which will be a good thing. But, just on a side note, the harder your water, the less your soap works. So that's why you get calcification and everything else on your dishes, and that's why people have water softeners. And But then you end up having a ton of sodium bicarbonate that ends up in the system. Um, so, you know, for home, taking showers and everything that's fine but for plants and for controlling the pH and water and fluctuation for fish and plants that's not a good thing to have your water too soft so that's where we are with that in the morning I'll check the pH and if it's seeming like it jumped up again I'll just give it a little uh, another teaspoon of uh, phosphoric acid and just try and get on top of this but now I'm super excited. Look at that leaf just standing straight up. Just crazy. The veins and how de defined everything is looks beautiful. Sorry about the focusing, but I think the high definition pictures and seeing all the hairs and everything are pretty cool. And as you can see, the basil. I was looking at other um, videos from earlier on, and you can see really tell a difference how much growth there is from exactly one week ago today. If you side by side two frames from last Tuesday evening to Tuesday evening today, it's amazing. They're really growing very well. I'm getting ready to go through a drain. We're at 11 minutes and 15 seconds on the fill and 90 seconds to drain it. Look how clear that water is. How much oxygen by propelling itself into the water, it's breaking the surface and disturbing it and oxygenating the water also. So we are getting tons of oxygen in this system. And go get the other side view. see just how much the bed is filling out that same buddy of mine he's gonna he's got some Swiss chard uh, that he's gonna bring over for me because as soon as fish go into the system I'm gonna have a lot more nutrients uh, available than I do right now um, my uh, nitrate level is above 20 not quite as red as 40 but it's definitely above 20 and uh, the plants are doing, have plenty of food, but once the fish go in, my nitrates are gonna go up to where I am gonna need a second bed and more plants for sure. Cause there'll just be more food, plant food being produced and, and, and in the system than uh, these plants can use. Once they get bigger, they'll use more, but at the moment, they're doing really well. Look at that. Can't even see the plants behind it at the level shot now behind the jalapeno. It's awesome. We're gonna have a ton of kale, a ton of cucumbers. So hopefully this weekend, maybe I'll, I don't know which, what project I'm gonna do next. If I'm gonna go ahead and set up the second grow bed right here, or if I'm gonna go ahead and drop the trellis down here and prepare for the to train the cucumbers down and just fill up the whole front part of this with uh, cucumber vines. Uh, Friday night, uh, I think the wife and I are going to be without the kids and maybe we'll get over to Kiwanis and catch a, a few baby bluegill. 
I need them to be really small because once I do finally introduce the tilapia to it, I'm probably only going to do one to two inch fingerlings and I don't need some aggressive, crazy fish killing off my tilapia. Bluegills are very aggressive. That's why I basically couldn't do a whole tank full of bluegill in here. They would just be feeding on each other, or beating the crap out of each other most of the time. So. So anyways, that's the evening update and where we're at, getting exciting. We're getting close to putting fish in the system. Uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks.